Hey, what's up, guys? I just finished streaming Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I just finished Chapter 13. I'm going into Chapter 14, which is the final chapter of the game. And uh, before I go any further, I wanted to stop. And I wanted to make a video and just, I thought it would be fun to give my prediction for what will happen to Aerith. And I want to start by talking about, you know, my, my history with the game a little bit, my connection to this character, Aerith. And I want to talk about why they might kill her again. I want to talk about why they might let Aerith live, and then I want to give my prediction. I will try to avoid as many spoilers as I can, but I'm going to talk about Final Fantasy VII, the original, and I'm going to talk about my experience with Remake and Rebirth up to this point, and that's going to include some spoilers. The first thing I just want to say is that I love this game. This, this game is so good. I haven't felt this way over a video game, I want to say in a long time, but I felt this way about a video game actually two months ago, and it was called Final Fantasy VII. I played the first Final Fantasy VII in January 2024, and now it's March 2024. And I had thankfully avoided spoilers about the game for pretty much my whole life. I had always avoided any conversation around Final Fantasy VII because I knew that I was going to play it one day. I just didn't know when. And I decided before Rebirth... It was time to dive in and not just dive into Final Fantasy 7, but dive into all the games. So I played Final Fantasy 7. I played Crisis Core Reunion. I played Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I played Dirge and now I'm on Rebirth. So a lot of this is new to me. A lot of the lore is new to me. The characters are new to me. So I'm sure that I'm missing things. Plus, I'm not only is it new, but I'm streaming it all and I'm distracted with chat and stuff like that. So I'm sure I don't know the lore as well as you. I'm sure that I don't know the characters as well as you. I'm sure that my thoughts aren't as educated as thoughts coming from, you know, people that have been fans of this franchise for years and years and years, maybe even as far back as 1997 when the original launched versus me, who is just a fan of it for two months, right? But even though this is new to me, I feel so connected to Aerith and I'm so invested in her story. And when I saw her die in the original game, I was absolutely crushed. That reaction, by the way, is here on my channel. It was, it, it just completely caught me off guard. I started that playthrough of the original Final Fantasy VII. I started that um, pushing for the Cloud Tifa romance and looking for the gold saucer date for Cloud Tifa. I knew nothing about these characters, but I knew there was like this, this kind of like um, three-way love triangle dynamic between Cloud and Tifa and Cloud and Aerith. I didn't really understand it, didn't know much about the game, decided to go with Cloud and Tifa in the original, and I decided that when I played the remake, which at the time I thought was going to be a one-to-one -one remake, I'm wrong, but I, I said I would go for Tifa in the original, and I would go for Aerith in the remake. I quickly started to uh, not regret my decision, but I just, within you know five or ten hours of playing Final Fantasy VII, I just felt myself gravitating more and more towards Aerith. I liked how funny she was. I liked how sweet she was. I liked how playful she was, how she would roast Cloud. I really appreciated how Aerith dealt with characters that were emotionally conflicted or going through some sort of, you know, mental issue. It just seemed like Aerith had this deep empathy for people around her and knew how to reach somebody when they had walls up and they had their guard up and they had retreated into themselves. It always seemed like more so than any other character in the game, Aerith understood how to help somebody come out of their shell. I just really liked that about her. And again, I also liked how she was, you know, kind of always down for a little mischief, you know what I'm saying? And, and down, you know, for shenanigans and things like that. I just really liked her character. I've always been drawn to kind of like tragic characters. And when it comes to a tragic character, I just think Aerith is written so well. She's written in a way that I think lures the player into a sense of like confidence, calmness, relaxation, feeling extremely comfortable with her and around her, feeling safe. She's an extremely powerful character. Great to have in your party. Uh, and you just, you just feel like nothing could happen to her. She always seems one step ahead, for instance, of other party members. She seems to always have like 
a larger awareness of what's going on around her than anyone else. So you feel like she's going to be the last one that's caught off guard, the last one that's taken by surprise. And when I reflect on her death in the original game, I don't think that she was caught off guard or taken by surprise. It doesn't change how it affects the player. It doesn't change how surprised the player would be. And I was absolutely shocked when she died. And watching in other games and in other media like Advent Children, watching how Cloud suffered from that. Obviously, Cloud was extremely upset. He couldn't have a regular relationship with Tifa. He just seemed always thinking about and and if i was in his position i feel like i'd be the same way i feel like i would never be able to get over the fact that i was four feet away from her when she died and i i didn't do anything to stop it i couldn't stop it i didn't react fast enough whatever and i feel like that haunted cloud forever so i feel like there's a lot of reasons why gamers and fans of this franchise would want to see her live in Rebirth. When I was asked before I played the remake trilogy and before I played Re Rebirth, when I was asked, what do you hope they'll do? I remember saying that, of course, I wanted her to live. I don't want to watch her die again. I want her to live. And I feel like with the story that they're telling in the remake trilogy, she could. And I also feel like that's another reason why maybe they should kill her again. I hate using that language, but they gave players hope, you know, they gave us hope that maybe she'll live. We've created an alternate timeline in the game. Now it's not a one-to-one -one remake. It's clear that the game is self-aware and it's playing off of your expectations. The way the game is written, it's like the characters are trying to change fate. They're trying to change the outcome of Final Fantasy VII from the original. So it's like the game is constantly breaking the fourth wall. The game is constantly referencing the original game and what what happened in the original game character deaths in the original game and it's switching them up some people die that are supposed to die some people don't some people die in different ways some people are you know killed and then brought back because they're not supposed to die yet and uh and it's just created this doubt in the player's mind where you know now if I was going into a one-to-one -one remake, I would know she's going to die again, and it wouldn't affect me as much. It would still have an effect on me, but it wouldn't affect me as much because I know what's going to happen, and I have so much time to prepare for it. I am 100 hours. I think I'm like 102 hours into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, just Rebirth, and I don't feel prepared at all. Tomorrow, I'm going to beat the game. Tomorrow, I'm going to find out what happens. And I'm extremely nervous because I I can't, you know, I just, I'm not ready to watch that if it goes down the way that it did in the original. Um, and because this doubt has been created, if they do kill her again, I feel like it will resonate like it did in the original. I feel like it will hit just as hard as it hit in the original game, because now I know she's supposed to die, but I don't know if she will die. I have hope that she could live. They've created another timeline where now she could live. She could totally survive, should she? If I'm writing the game, I'm probably still killing her off because I feel like it's easier. I feel like it would be easier to kill Aerith again now. You've created doubt. You've created hope that maybe she lives. You yank it away and you kill her and you break everybody's hearts again. Everybody's crying. You've got that emotional reaction and you can move on with the story similar to how you did in the original. If you let Aerith live, then... You know, you have to write that in an equally compelling way, and I feel like that would be harder because you don't have the original to lean on anymore. You've changed the story almost completely. You've added so many new dynamics, and Aerith is alive. So you're going to have to write something completely new pretty much, and you're going to have to make it as impactful as losing her, and I feel like that's more difficult. So when I think about reasons why they should let her live, 
I think about the new timeline. I think about the way that Cloud was affected when he wasn't able to save her and how it would be cathartic for us as players if we got to see Cloud save her in this game, if she was able to live, you know, that, that kind of coming full circle moment. Even more so than that, the idea of Zack saving her, that really makes me emotional because I feel like Zack Fair is a character that just has not really been given his flowers properly. I feel like he's a character that, you know, he starred in Crisis Core Reunion, but that game was pretty mid and that's being generous to some people, but he's a great character. And I think he's in a lot of ways much more suited for Aerith than Cloud. Uh, Zach clearly cares so much about Aerith. And I love that one of the last things that they show at the end of chapter 13, they go back to Zach's conversation with Marlene. And he asks Marlene if Aerith liked Cloud. And Marlene says, yes, she likes him. And, uh, only, and she says, because you weren't there, but I don't know if that was a reference to, um, I don't know if that was a reference to Zach, you know, wasn't there to see what happened between Cloud and Aerith, or if, you know, Marlene was kind of saying that Zach wasn't there, and that's one of the reasons why she atta attached to Cloud. We could theory craft on that all day. I don't want to dive into that, but what I do want to say is that, like, Zach makes a decision at, at the end of chapter 13 where he could go and try to save Biggs, or he could go and try to save Cloud. He could go and, and, and do something to try and save Cloud. And um, he chooses to save Cloud, knowing that Aerith has a romantic interest in him, I think. And I think it's Zack just trusting that if he can't be there for Aerith, he's okay with Cloud being there for Aerith. And man, that just... Like Aerith, I've watched Zack make so many sacrifices. You know, he gave his life and saved Cloud in Crisis Core. And here in Rebirth, I'm not sure if Zack gave his life. I have no idea if there's going to be more Zack cutscenes or what's going on. But, you know, there's this idea now that maybe Zack gave his life to save, you know, to save Aerith through Cloud. Uh, in these alternate timelines. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm I'm in the middle of these reveals and I'm in the middle of these like revelations. So I only have part of the story, right? I only have part of the story to make this video on. But I think because of all of this, they could easily save her. They could. I really feel like they could save Aerith and that she could live. And that if they do that, um, you know, they could do it in a way that makes sense and in a way that doesn't betray the original game. I think it's possible. And then we could go into the final, you know, the third game of the trilogy and, you know, the horizon could be completely wide open for us. You know, uh, we, we would see Aerith live and, you know, Cloud would be able to possibly atone for seeing, for, for not saving her in the original game. Zack has an opportunity to maybe secondhand save Aerith, which I think is beautiful, um, and also seems to maybe be giving his blessing if Aerith wants to be with Cloud, which I don't know what that means for Cloud and Tifa. I, I don't know. I'm not here to talk about shipping in this video. Um, but I think that they could let her live, and I think that they could let her live in a way that's okay, in a way that makes sense, in a way that doesn't betray the original. I think they could do that. But I also think that the way they've teased her death so much and re they have teased her death through the entire game from the very beginning of i mean i think it was at the beginning of remake you Aerith and 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 cloud see each other and sephiroth appears and touches Aerith on the shoulder and approaches cloud talking about you can't save anyone you can't save yourself you know and seven seconds to the end, you know, seven seconds to, you know, what will you decide? I don't even know what that completely means yet, but they've been hinting at her death so much that part of me thinks, okay, they've overdone it. They're not going to kill her. Another part of me thinks they are going to kill her and they're just hamming it up. They're just, they're just pouring syrup on it. 
they're just poor. They're just milking it, milking it, milking it, milking it. Right. I probably don't need to do this, but they're, I feel like maybe they're just milking it, but because I'm not sure what's going to happen. And I don't think any player is sure what's going to happen. If they do kill her, I'll absolutely be devastated again, but I don't want that to happen. But at the same time, I think it's also possible they could kill her and then bring her back in the third one. They've created alternate, you know, they've created these multiple timelines. Uh, they could play around with it. She dies in one, she lives in another. There's the, the options for what they do at the end of Rebirth here going into the third game. The options are wide open. There's so many different things. There's so many different ways they could go. Cloud could save her. Zach could save her. She could die. She could die and then come back. Cloud could snap and be the one that kills her. Like it could go in so many different directions. I, I I feel completely lost thinking about what will or won't happen, but I will make my prediction. And my prediction is that they're still going to kill her. And I, th I think that Sephiroth is going to be the one that kills her. But I don't think she will stay dead. I just feel like... I feel like Zack still being in the picture means something. Either Zack is able to, you know, make a huge sacrifice that allows her to live or something. I think what I want to happen most, as much as I would love to see Cloud save Aerith, I would love to see Zack save Aerith. I just think Zack and Aerith, you know, the, the tragedy of both of their characters and the tragedy of their love, you know, when Zack died at the end of Crisis Core and Aerith sensed it, you know, and then when Zack survived and you see him alive in Rebirth and there's a moment where I think Aerith is touching the live stream and she senses Zack's presence. I just feel like their story is so beautiful and they, there's been so much tragedy with these two characters. I think it would mean a lot for the player base to see some kind of happy ending for them, some kind of closure in a positive light for them. I just don't know how, if I was a writer, I don't know how I would write it, but I think that I would love to see Sephiroth coming down to stab Aerith and the Buster Sword appears and blocks it, but it's not Cloud holding it at Zack. I would lose my shit for that. But I just don't think, I just don't think she lives. I just don't. I still think Sephiroth kills her. I still think Sephiroth kills her. And um, I don't know what happens after that because I do think Sephiroth will kill her. But I don't think that she will just be gone and just be in the live stream, uh, you know, for the rest of Final Fantasy VII. I just don't see that happening. I feel like Zack is like this, you know, ace up squares sleeve that they could use Zack to alter this story in some way where maybe Aerith comes back or something. I don't really know. But my prediction for Rebirth is that in the final chapter, Sephiroth will still kill her. Um, but I'll find out tomorrow. I'm streaming it at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope that she doesn't die. I hope that she lives, but only if it's done in a way where the story makes sense and is still as powerful as the original. And that's, that's hard. It's going to be hard to tell a story that powerful without a character death like that. So I don't know what they'll do, but... I hope it's good, and I hope I see you there, and if you miss it, you're not there, I'll put a link in the pinned comment of this video, and I'll see you at the next stream. Take care.